So today I wanted to cover my thoughts on the future of virtual idol groups and why I think they, in the long run at least, will not really work out. As technology advances in our society in every single facet, whether it be, you know, things like agriculture, business, sports, the terms of AI and different virtual things are always brought up. And now it is leaked into K-pop and talking about virtual idols, which is always kind of logistically been a step forward in the entertainment medium. If it's one place that AI or a virtual companion were to jump into, it would be K-pop for sure. And while many seem to think that this is the natural step forward in K-pop, a lot of virtual idols and what it really stands for actually stands, at least in my opinion, in complete opposition to what K-pop is really known for. Now before I go any further, I don't want to make anyone feel bad for liking virtual groups. If you like virtual groups and virtual idols, that's perfectly okay. I'm not here to judge what you like. I myself don't even really hate the concept all that much of virtual idols because I do like a technical virtual idol group in KDA, which we'll get to in a little bit. So just keep in mind that this is all opinionated and you're entitled to your own opinions too. So don't let my opinion or the way I talk in this video influence your own. This isn't a video of me trying to convince you to dislike them, it's just a video of me explaining why I dislike them and why I think they're not going to catch on. So recently an all virtual idol group called Maeve debuted with their debut song Pandora, which I will admit is actually a pretty decent song. Truly is not the greatest thing ever, but it does have a pretty catchy chorus with some decently interesting choreo. Now you can actually get their first like album and it is pretty cool looking. It kind of opens up like how a Pandora's box would open up and I don't know, I mean it looks kind of cool. There are four virtual members in this group. They all have their own distinct personalities and they're sort of just functioning as a regular K-pop group just virtually and they even had some live stages and stuff. I don't really know how the fuck that works, but it, it happened. Now when it comes to virtual idol groups, there are actually some things that are pretty interesting about them. First of all, music video wise, you can kind of just let your creative juices flow. You can kind of just do whatever you want because they're a virtual idol group. They can do anything they want because they're not real. You can have them flying around space if you want, like they're not real people, so you can kind of just generate them however you want. This will lead to some really cool music videos in the future, like their debut Pandora was pretty cool. I didn't like how some of the animation looked, but for the most part it was pretty. Like it was decently well done. The only way I see a virtual idol group being overworked is if the animators are overworked, but for the most part you can kind of come back whenever you want and you can do it a lot quicker because they're again not real people. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that when it comes to the animators, the producers behind the music, but for the most part, I expect that a lot of these virtual idol groups in the future will be able to come back a lot faster. On top of this, it doesn't really matter all that much, but they're not underage, which I know sounds really dumb, but like in K-pop, as idols are getting younger and younger, it is kind of somewhat a breath of fresh air to get even, even if they are fake idols, still idols that aren't fucking 14. Look, someone in Japan a little while ago married a legit hologram, so I'm just going to leave that out there for you guys to dissect yourself. Now, there are other virtual idol groups that have existed. Uh, KDA is kind of a virtual idol group. The reason I say kind of is because they don't really fit the parameters that I would consider a virtual idol group, and we'll get into why. I think the biggest controversy that Maeve got into on their debut is the fact that they kind of seem to be styled and give a similar vibe to what Aespa does, and Aespa already has virtual idol members to begin with, but a lot of people don't really fucking care about them. But I saw a ton of people saying like some of the members of this virtual idol group look like Karina and stuff and they were kind of just trying to copy. I will say it almost seems like a lot of their like color palette and styling at least with this first debut seems to mimic some of what Aespa has done but I wouldn't say it's like plagiarism or copying to any degree. But you know now we're about four minutes into the video you're probably like you know Teiji like okay like everything so far hasn't been that bad why do you think they're not going to take off? Here's the thing about K-pop. K-pop is marketed as being a entertainment medium in which the idols are able to interact with their fans often. You have things like fan sign events, fan call events, uh, a ton of concerts. K-pop is promoted as a very interactive industry between the artists and the fans. And while this has driven some negative fan culture like sasangs and such, it is something that has proven to be very beneficial for the genre and is something that, in my opinion, Maeve will not be able to capitalize on because there's no way they're going to be able to do fan sign events and fan call events with virtual idols, at least not yet anyway. 
On top of that, they don't have like real live shows or anything. There's no real interactivity between them and the public. They're just, you know, a virtual idol group online. Just like how you can't communicate with your favorite anime character, you probably aren't going to be able to communicate with these virtual idol members. I don't think fans are going to be able to dig down and form a connection with Maeve because there aren't really striking personalities behind any of these idols. Look, fun fact, the reason why I got into BTS was less because of their music at first and was more because I just really enjoyed watching the members just hang out and do their thing. They were a bunch of really likable people and it's the reason they were able to grab such a big fan base was because they were very down to earth. Tell me, are you really going to sit down and expect to watch a funny moments compilation video of Mave members? The answer is no, you're never going to see that. And things like compilation videos like that go a long way into drawing in fan bases. I just don't think a lot of fans are going to be able to form personal connections with virtual idols. Now, the thing is, is that, you know, you can form plenty of like very minor personal attachments to like for example anime characters one of my favorite characters of all time is spike spiegel from cowboy bebop i love that dude he's awesome cowboy bebop is my favorite anime of all time or you know someone like goku from dragon ball z i grew up watching that so i kind of have a sentimental attachment to that anime but that's kind of a whole different thing rather to a k-pop idol which you have a different type of attachment to a lot of k-pop idols are presented as friendly faces to a lot of people that's why they are supposed to be presented as these perfect human beings on screen and i just feel like mave isn't going to be able to replicate that because again they are not real now I want to bring up KDA again because KDA is slightly different in the way they approach a virtual idol group because KDA is based off of a video game that 180 million people in 2023 play. League of Legends, arguably one of the largest multiplayer games of all time and is most likely the largest esport of all time. There are playable characters known as champions in the game and Riot takes full monetization priority with them. When the K-pop craze started heating up, Riot took full advantage and put together this kind of faux virtual idol group with some of the actual champions in their game serving as the quote-unquote idols and getting real-life singers to voice those different champions. For example, Akali, a member of KDA, is Soyeon from Idol in K-pop, and Myeon from Idol also represents Ari in KDA. There are three big reasons as to why KDA succeeded. One, they already had a market to pull from. They already had an established IP to use. You don't have to create a, a universe or anything for these idols to live in. You're literally just taking a Kali from the game, someone who millions of people play on a daily basis, and using them as an idol. The second reason is because they had real life counterparts that I already stated that represented these idols. So whenever I look at Akali and KDA, I think, oh, that's Soyeon from Idol. I'm not necessarily saying the talent was a, a ton better in KDA than it is in Maeve, but KDA also had Madison Beer and Myeon singing for it, so I would definitely argue that. And third, you had a really good music video and pretty decent music to back it up. KDA's music is, it's not the best thing. It's not even really that good coming from Riot and League of Legends, which is known for pumping out really great music, by the way. League has some banger OSTs. But mainly the really high quality art direction and music video style that Riot is always known for. They're really great at animation and they definitely showed it off for KDA. KDA also had a pretty good like world championship for league performance where they all kind of got on stage and performed. It was kind of weird with like the the holograms being used on the stage too, but overall it went over pretty well and a good amount of people liked it. This has led Riot and League to doing other things like their Giants line as well, which is also a skin line which features people like Kiki Palmer and Thutmose and stuff like that. Becky G was also in that as well, so they just have these big name celebrities representing these league characters. And I'm not saying Maeve will never get to that point, but virtual idol groups in K-pop are kind of starting off of a shorthand compared to a group like KDA. I see a lot of people compare these new virtual idol groups, even some of the, you know, uh, AI or virtual idol ASPA members uh, to KDA. And KDA is just completely different because, first of all, it's doing a completely different thing. And it also had way more of a platform to launch itself off of. While I'm not preying on the downfall necessarily for virtual idol groups, I just never think they're going to be the next big thing because a lot of K-pop comes from the connectivity between the idols and the fans or the connectivity that is kind of 
given to the fans or displayed for the fans by the industry. You know, you could argue if there's really a lot of connection there. But that illusion of a idol being your best friend is one of the big things that drives the industry. And I just don't see that happening with people that aren't real. Again, if you like virtual idol groups, that's completely okay. If you're into Maeve, that's completely okay. Again, I'm someone who actually kind of liked Pandora on first listen. I think it's kind of catchy. I don't think it's necessarily a terrible song. So, like, if they want to make music and stuff, I'll listen to it. I'm just not going to stay in a virtual idol group, and I just don't think they have much of a place in the K-pop industry. This is not an uncommon sentiment. I see this opinion a good amount online. I just wanted to kind of finalize my opinion on it and put it on this channel and see if you guys agree or disagree. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Quick little video before my next big video project coming out, which will definitely take me a little while to edit and put together, so stay tuned for that. But I just want to get my thoughts out there about Maeve and future of virtual idol groups and stuff, so tell me what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in another video.